Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about episode 88, so let's get to it. Episode 88 begins in Ceres Institute, where Go receives his second official trial mission for Project Mew. This time he is tasked with accomplishing the mission with ingenuity and imagination, and, just like before, he can pick one of three missions. Go ends up picking the mission of catching a wild Kingdra, and he says that he picked this mission because he catches Pokemon better than anyone else, which is a controversial statement. I think that the better argument is that he catches Pokemon easier than anyone else. Krisa uses the lab's monitor to display Kingdra's Pokedex entry, which says that Kingdra live deep in the ocean. They create whirlpools just by yawning, and when they see a Dragonite, a fierce battle begins. Ren says that catching a wild Kingdra is known to be pretty difficult, and Krisa adds that most people would rather evolve a Seedra by giving it a Dragon Scale and trading it, since it is much easier. Professor Cerise says that it sounds like the mission certainly won't be easy, and and he wonders if Go is sure about his choice. Go is shaken and he doubts himself until Ash smacks him in the back while saying, you can catch Pokemon better than anyone else, right? This gives Go the confidence to stick with the mission that he chose. This illustrates just how weak Go's confidence is. He was boasting earlier that he can catch Pokemon better than anyone else, and yet, he lost his confidence immediately when he realized that catching Kingdra won't be as easy as he thought. This proves that what I said earlier is true. Go can catch Pokemon easier than anyone else, not better. If you throw some actual difficulty into the mix, then Go will have a tough time catching Pokemon. But of course, most of his catches thus far have been very easy, which is why he has such an inflated ego when it comes to catching Pokemon. And this adds to one of Go's problems. His bark is much stronger than his bite. He can certainly talk the talk, but he can't really walk the walk. At least not confidently and without a lot of encouragement. So, Go uses his phone to search for a place where he might find a wild Kingdra. And he finds that there have been whirlpools in the seas near Slateport City in the Hoenn region. Therefore, Ash and Go decide to travel to Slateport City. It is worth noting that in the games, you cannot find Kingdra in Slateport City, regardless of whether you surf or fish in the seas around the city. In fact, you cannot find Wild Kingdra at all in the Generation 3 games. The only way to get a Kingdra in these games is by evolving Seedra or by trading. Though to be fair, this is the case with most generations. Wild Kingdra can only be found in the Generation 5 and Generation 8 games, meaning that even in the games, getting a Wild Kingdra is rare and difficult. So, Ash and Go arrive in Slaveport City and they head to the ocean first. Go sends out his Dugong and Mantike, who take Ash and Go and a raft that has Pikachu, Grookey, and Ash and Go's backpacks in it out to the open seas. Once they travel far enough, Ash and Go dive into the ocean with the help of Dugong and Mantike, and they begin their search for Kingdra. The first thing that they see is a bunch of Love Disc. Go uses his Pokedex to get more information on Love Disc. The Pokedex mentions that Love Disc love to sleep in the space between Corsola's branches. Ash then points out that they can witness this very thing up ahead, which is both cute and sweet. Go decides to throw a Pokeball in order to catch either a Love Disc or a Corsola, but the Pokeball ends up floating up to the surface, and the Love Disc and Corsola get scared as a result, and they swim away. Go is very disappointed by this, which is odd. I guess that he forgot that he already tried to catch a Pokemon underwater back in episode 63, and he failed in the same way, so he should not be so disappointed, considering that he should know better by now. Ash and Go then run into a Feebas who gets scared by Ash and Go. This in turn scares Ash and Go who rush to the surface to get air because they opened their mouths. Their sudden appearance scares Pikachu and Grookey who were just relaxing on the raft. This is a very funny sequence. Ash and Go realize that they must dive even deeper because they can't even find any Seedra. And so, Ash and Go dive back down over and over again and while they do find a bunch of Pokemon, both friendly and hostile, they do not not find a Kingdra or a Seedra. 
Gold does, however, find a shard made of ceramic that was clearly part of something, and it does have what appears to be the snout of a Kingdra on it. While Ash and Gold look at this curious item, a Waylord sneaks up behind them. Waylord shoots water out its back, which launches Ash, Gold, Yugong, and Mantaik up towards the surface, and they end up shooting up into the sky. They, of course, eventually fall right back into the water. Now, I love the way that Pikachu and Grookey react here, or rather, I love that they pretty much do not react at all. Ash, Gold, Yugong, and Mantaik shoot up into the sky, which is sudden, random, and unexpected, and yet, Pikachu and Grookey are just like, oh, it's them again. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's like they just expect crazy nonsense to happen, so they are just like, oh, whatever, which is in stark contrast to their earlier reaction. Or maybe this previous shock made them more accustomed to surprises, or maybe they have been relaxing for so long that now nothing can steer them up. So Ash and Go lament their current state until someone says, what are you doing messing around out here? Ash and Go both look in the direction that the boys came from and they see this huge ship and on the ship's crane, they find none other than good old Drake. Ash immediately recognizes Drake, though he calls Drake Gonji, when Drake's name in Japanese is Genji. Likewise, Drake immediately recognizes Ash, but he calls Ash Savashi instead of Satoshi so neither of them could remember the other's name, which is strange. Since Ash has called every other returning character in Pokemon Journeys by their proper name, so it's weird that he would forget Drake's name specifically. Though Ash last saw Drake in the episode Vanity Affair, which was 798 episodes ago. Out of all the returning characters in Pokemon Journeys thus far, Drake was absent from the anime the longest. Even Lance had a shorter absence of 721 episodes when he appeared back in episode 12 of Pokemon Journeys. So, I guess that you can excuse the fact that Ash and Drake forgot each other's name since it has been so long since they last saw each other. Though Ash did remember Lieutenant Search's name back in episode 18 of Pokemon Journeys. Lieutenant Search did not appear physically in episode 18 of course, but still Ash remembered his name even though Lieutenant Search's last physical appearance in the anime was over 1000 episodes prior to episode 18 of Pokemon Journeys. So again, it's weird that Ash forgot Drake's name. As for Drake, well, maybe he did forget Ash's name since it's been so long. Though given Drake's personality and the way that he looks at Ash, like, I know you, but from where do I know you? It's more likely that Drake simply did not try too hard to remember Ash's name. Also, it's ironic that Ash is disappointed because Drake got his name wrong, even though Ash got Drake's name wrong first. So the episode cuts to Drake's ship. Ash and Go are now aboard and they tell Drake about Go's mission. Go wonders if Drake has seen a Kingdra in the area and Drake says that he has seen one. He was once deep underwater and he was caught by a Whirlpool which dragged him deeper underwater and that's when he saw the only wild Kingdra he has ever seen. Go realizes that to find a Kingdra he and Ash must dive even deeper than before which is not physically possible. Ash says that they just need to try harder, but Go says that some things are not possible no matter how hard you try. So Ash wonders if Go will just give up, and Go says that he won't. He just needs to think of something. And he realizes that the preface for his current mission did say to complete the mission using imagination and ingenuity, meaning that he has to find a clever solution to complete the mission. So Go wonders what Drake used to dive so deep before. Drake, knowing what Go is going to ask, says that he will lend his equipment to Ash and Go on the condition that Ash and Go help him with his treasure hunting work, which Ash and Go accept. Drake then dives with a metal detector while Ash and Go support him from the ship. It turns out that Drake has been looking for an ancient submarine from thousands of years ago. Now it's funny and adorable that Pikachu and Grookey play peekaboo by hiding around Shellgun, and Pikachu scares Grookey. Go soon says that he feels that he and Ash are just wasting time, so he sends out Chin Chow and he has Ash send out Lucario. Go's idea is to combine Lucario's aura with Chin Chow's supersonic waves, so that they can create a makeshift radar that can search the ocean more efficiently. They all continue searching until sunset, at which point Drake says that they should call it quits for the day. Ash and Go agree with him, however, Lucario finally finds something up ahead. So Go tells Drake to keep going since there might be something up ahead. 
Drake keeps searching and while he does not find anything initially, he eventually finds the ancient submarine he was looking for, which happens to be shaped like a Kingdra. However, since it would be dangerous to stay out here when it's dark, Drake simply takes some pictures of the submarine and he tells Ash and Gold to bring him back to the ship. On the ship, Drake shows Ash and Gold the pictures he took of the submarine. Go wonders why the submarine is shaped like a Kingdra. Drake says that he has no idea, but he believes that the ancient civilization that built the submarine must have idolized Kingdra. Drake then shows Ash and Go a base that he found while walking Shellgun on the beach. I love that Shellgun is like a puppy that must be walked, and it's always by Drake's side like a loyal pet. The base that Drake found has Kingdra on it, which again shows that the ancient civilization in question loved Kingdra. Drake says that he investigated the base, and he found out about a legend surrounding it, that an ancient submarine sunk with treasure in it. It was at this moment that Drake decided to take up treasure hunting as a hobby, and he hunts for treasure whenever he is not busy with Elite Four business. He also says that he once had a huge sailboat, but the small ship he has now works just as well. Now he is probably referring to the ship he had the last time he appeared in the anime, which is the ship where he and Ash battled. I wonder what happened to that ship and to Drake's crew. Also, the ship he has now might be smaller than the one he had before, but it is in no way a small ship. So, Go remembers the ceramic fragment he picked up before and he shows it to Drake, who says that said fragment is also from the submarine, which is not surprising since like I said earlier, this fragment clearly has the snout of a kingdra printed on it. Drake says that Ash and Go are pretty lucky themselves, especially because they even found a submarine. Ash then wonders what Drake will do after he finds the treasure. Drake says that he will simply move on to searching for the next treasure. This surprises Ash and Go because Drake has no attachment to the current treasure, and he would move on from it easily. Drake says that his true objective is to have dreams and adventures to pursue. This impresses Ash and Go who think that Drake is very cool. Drake then says that they should all go to sleep since they have an early start the next day. The next day, Drake says that Ash and Go should be the ones that dive this time. Ash and Go are confused because Drake is the one that has been searching for the treasure for so long. But Drake says that it's their turn to make their dream come true and he tells them to catch the wild Kingdra. Ash and Go happily accept and they get geared up and ready to dive. Go says that they might find some clues in the submarine since the ancient civilization idolized Kingdra. So Ash and Go decide to start their search there. Drake then gives them a spare oxygen tank that will allow them to breathe for 10 minutes, should they disconnect from the hose that gives them oxygen. Ash and Go then dive into the ocean and they swim until they see the ancient submarine. And I think that it does kind of look like a Kingdra, but it also looks more like something straight out of Power Rangers. Ash and Go approach the submarine and they are hit by a strong current. Drake says that he believes that the submarine was not originally here, but it is here now because it was carried by the current. Ash and Go force their way past the current and they manage to enter the submarine. Inside the submarine they find more love disc and they find a Huntail and a Gorbis, which reminded me of episode 63. So episode 88 definitely has a lot in common with episode 63. Go then spots a Seedra as well, which surprises Go and Go's reaction scares Seedra who swims away. Ash and Go chase after Seedra, but they can't keep up. Seedra ends up escaping from the submarine, however, Seedra bumps into a Sharpie though and... I love Seedra's reaction like, oh no, I am in real trouble now. Seedra rushes back to the submarine with Sharpie though in pursuit. Meanwhile, Ash and Go enter what appears to be the control room of the submarine. Here they find a Relicanth that clearly has something under it. Relicanth swims away when it spots Ash and Go, which reveals that Relicanth was on top of a treasure chest. Ash and Go open the chest, but there is only sand in it. However, Go still checks if there might be something in the sand, and he finds a Dragon Scale, which is the item that Seedra needs to evolve into Kingdra. At this point, I thought that this might factor into Go completing his mission, since there is a Seedra roaming about. Sure, Seedra needs to be traded to evolve, but I thought that maybe something special would happen. 
Seedra then enters the control room as well, and Go takes out a Pokeball to catch Seedra. However, Seedra hides behind Go since it is still being chased by Sharpedo, who swims straight towards Seedra and Go. But Go raises his arms in fear in order to protect himself, and since he still has a Pokeball in hand, Sharpedo crashes into the Pokeball and is caught by Go. See, why have Go boast that he catches Pokemon better than anyone else, only to then have him catch a Pokemon on accident like this? which proves that he relies mostly on luck to catch Pokemon. This is just silly if you ask me. Seedra then shows an interest in the Dragon Scale that Go found, so Go gives the Dragon Scale to Seedra since the mission is to catch a wild Kingdra. Therefore, Go has no use for the Dragon Scale, though I did expect that Seedra would break the rules and it would evolve right here. Go then shows Seedra a picture of Kingdra, hoping that Seedra has seen one nearby, and it turns out that Seedra does know where to find a Kingdra. And so, Seedra leads Ash and Go to an underwater cave. However, Ash and Go cannot get to the cave because they can't dive any deeper, since the hoses attached to their suits won't go any further. Seedra then swims away in a panic because it senses that a Whirlpool is coming from the cave. Said Whirlpool hits Ash and Go, so Drake decides to pull them back to the ship. But Go refuses to leave, since Kingdra's Pokedex entry says that Kingdra can produce Whirlpools by yawning. So there might be a Kingdra in the cave. Go decides to enter the cave, so he detaches the hose connected to his suit, and he lets the Whirlpool take him into the cave. Once inside the cave, Go attaches the spare oxygen tank that Drake gave. Him. Go took quite the gamble here because he had no source of oxygen attached to his suit. So he would have been in serious trouble if the Whirlpool had kept him trapped instead of spitting him out inside the cave. Go looks around, but he does not find a Kingdra. He thinks about waiting for another Whirlpool which might lead him to Kingdra, but he realizes that he has no time to wait for this. He then remembers that Kingdra's Pokedex entry also said that when a Dragonite and a Kingdra meet, a fierce battle ensues. Now at this point I thought that Go might call for Ash, so that Ash can use Dragonite. But instead, Go plays a video of Ash's Dragonite on his phone, and the sound of a Dragonite attracts Kingdra. Now I do wonder if you can actually hear sound from from a phone deep underwater like this. Go wonders what he will do since throwing a Pokeball underwater does not work. He then has an idea and he sends out Intellion. Intellion uses Snipeshot repeatedly but Kingdra avoids every single attack. And it uses Dragon Breath to hit Go and Intellion who are pushed back. Go doubts himself once again but Ash and Dracovish show up and they stop Go and Intellion from being knocked back any further. Go realizes that he has friends to back him up and he is confident once again. He sends out Mantike who uses Ice Beam to create several blocks of ice that surround and trap Kingdra. Go then tells Intellion to use the move they have been practicing together. A practice that happened off screen, which is a shame since this would show that Go does actually train with his Pokemon from time to time. The move that Intellion and Go were practicing is Liquidation, which Intellion uses to hit Kingdra. And it's cool that Intellion uses Liquidation with both arms and both legs, meaning that this is a beatdown of a Liquidation. Go then throws a Pokeball and Intellion uses Snipeshot to shoot the Pokeball towards Kingdra, and so Go catches Kingdra, which completes his mission. Ash and Go then leave the cave, but they are caught by another strong current. Go's oxygen tank begins to beep because it is almost empty. So Go sends out his newly captured Kingdra. Ash and Go hold on to Kingdra and Kingdra uses Dragon Breath to propel itself towards the surface. On the way up, Go sees that the submarine is also being carried away by the current, which proves that Drake was right earlier when he mentioned that the submarine was carried here by the current. Go also sees that the Seedra from earlier is inside the submarine. Seedra happily waves at Go and it still has the dragon scale with it. It's interesting that a wild Seedra can have a dragon scale in the games, though this is very rare. So whoever catches this Seedra will be a very lucky trainer. So Ash and Go safely make it to the surface, and the episode then cuts to Asahi and Surugi, or rather, to Danica and Quillen. Yes, they have names in English now, which surprised me. I did not realize that the English dub was so far ahead. I have to say that I am really not a fan of their English names, so I think that I will stick to the Japanese names 
at least for now. So, Asahi is talking to Go on her phone and she confirms that Go completed his mission. Now, Asahi and Surugi are in the middle of some desert and they approach some big ruins. A Reggie Rock then emerges from said ruins and Asahi and Surugi get ready to battle it. This was shown in a special preview and I was really looking forward to this moment, but unfortunately, the episode cuts back to Ash and Go so we can't actually see Asahi and Surugi's battle versus Reggie Rock, which is a big shame. Hopefully, we do get to see it as a flashback or something in a future episode. So, Go receives his second Mew token. Drake then confirms that Go is collecting Mew tokens so that he can join a Mew search team, while Ash is participating in the World Coronation series with the hopes of becoming the world's strongest trainer. Drake says that these are what you call dreams and adventures, and that kids should hold on to these. And he says that he will be chasing dreams and adventures for the rest of his life as well, which is just so cool. And that's the episode. So overall, this was a great episode. It was very nice to see Drake again, especially after so long. He is one of the coolest Elite Four members, and even though we did not get to see him battle or anything like this, and it's cool that he is a treasure hunter now, which is something that definitely suits him. It's funny that in the episode Vanity Affair, Ash said that Drake's ship looked like a pirate ship, and now Drake travels the seas looking for treasure, which is something a pirate would do. Now, it would have been awesome if he had battled Ash, especially since they battled before and Ash lost. It would have been great to see what would happen this time since Ash now has much more experience. He is not overconfident like he was before and he now has two powerful dragon type Pokemon with him. So it is a shame that we did not get to see this battle but it is understandable since this episode was about Go and his mission. It's also a shame that Drake talked about the World Coronation series but he did not say anything about it. Meaning that he did not say if he is also participating in it or if he is interested in it or if he knows that someone in Important is participating in it, like when Bogner revealed that Cynthia is also participating in the World Coronation series. I guess that Drake does not have time for this tournament between his Elite Four work and his treasure hunting hobby. In any case, I do hope that we do see Drake again someday. Now, my biggest gripe with this episode is that we did not get to see Asahi and Surugi's battle with Regirock, which is something that I really wanted to see. As for the rest of the episode, it was the standard Go catches Pokemon easily and completes his mission without any significant difficulty template that we are used to by now, so nothing to get crazy over. Though the diving and treasure hunting theme was pretty cool. It reminded me of the Uncharted games which are some of my favorite games of all time. So yeah, I did enjoy this episode and I think that it was a great episode overall, but that's the video as always. Leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.